Hello everyone, Michelle here from the Creative Cove. Thanks for joining me today. It is Friday, uh, just before Canada Canada Day long weekend. So happy Canada Day to all my fellow Canadians out there. I uh, thought I'd jump on and show you the flip-flop journal, um, how I built it. I don't know if we'll get the whole thing done because it is pretty time consuming. It's enjoyable, don't get me wrong, but uh, it, it does take time to produce. So I thought I'd, I'd show you how I make mine. Now there are a lot of videos on how to make these. I did a tutorial on something the other day and I had mentioned that I would be decorating my flip-flop journal with that. And people had asked what a flip-flop journal was and uh, you basically make it out of envelopes. And what's nice about it is it, it flops open in different directions. So uh, it's built out of small envelopes, big envelopes, um, all kinds of goodies and uh, it opens in different directions. So this one opens this way. I sew a little uh, paper in there and it keeps opening. You can open it all the way. Uh, so it does things like that. And then you keep going to the end of the book. So this is the back. And then if you go back to the front again, the book also opens this way and you can pull it all the way open. And it really is just depends on the way you glue your envelopes and the way you choose to fold them. So the possibilities with this are pretty endless and they're a lot of fun. And uh, uh, I do like making them because they're pretty fast. Uh, you can also build, you know, you, you get to decorate it with some pretty little ephemera here. Uh, I went out of my comfort zone. I don't know if you noticed that, but I went with some really, really bold paper. Uh, really colorful paper, which was a lot of fun to use because uh, if you follow my channel, I'm usually into the neutral tones and um, the vintage vibe. Oh, that's what it is. I think it was the uh, Your Creative Studios uh, unboxing that I did. I had built this page and said I was going to build it into a flip-flop journal. That's exactly what it was. So this is the page here and uh, just a lot of fun. So let's get started. So you don't need a lot of materials for this. Uh, you just want to choose your, oh, I'm going to refold that. You just want to choose your, your papers and the size that you want to do. So I had uh, mentioned in another video that I had gone to the thrift shop and found a box load of full size envelopes. These guys, I must have got a hundred of them or more even. And I grabbed them, they were five bucks. So they are a really fun item to use and uh, th for these journals. So let me just get my bearings here. I've got stuff everywhere because I wanted to try and be a little prepared. But for some reason, that always backfires on me. It has already because I've lost my ruler. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be one of those videos. It is a long weekend. I also recently went to... Uh, my local scrapbook store and treated myself to some paper and bought scrapbook paper forever and I thought I would treat myself so I got this pad here the scrap boys uh, house of science scrapboys.com so there's this package I also picked up this package which is more of a fall color uh, simple stories uh, that's really pretty it's got some this I was really attracted to this one and this one and then these are really nice, but more of a fall color. So I don't think we'll use that one today. I just want to show you. Sometimes it's just inspirational just to see papers. And then I picked up this one, which is indigo. And um, it has uh, blues and golds in it, which I thought were really beautiful. So I was torn between these two. And I think I'm going to go with this one. This one's kind of talking to me right now. So I'm going to move with this one. And of course, it is more of my neutral colors much different than these bright bright colors I did on this one but I think we still have a lot of fun with it. So that's the paper I'm going to be using. I'm going to pull this out now. So this is a package. It comes with a bunch of papers and we'll have a quick look through and oh it comes with little cutouts. Didn't know that. Full pages is what I thought it came with. So really pretty. I think we'll have some fun with that. So we'll use those today. So first off, let's build our journal. So I'm gonna take my envelopes. And I'm gonna take my big guys. And I do need my ruler. So I wish I, I know I put it right here. 
because I knew I was going to need it. And now I've shoved it somewhere. I do it all the time. It's so frustrating. Ha! Huh. Found it. Okay. So again, no wrong or right to these journals. It really is just a fun way to glue envelopes. So grab whatever envelopes you have. So I have um, the white ones. I've got a couple of these left over from your Creative Studio packaging. I'll throw some of those in. Some white ones. Uh, you do want to kind of find envelopes that fit uh, that are roughly the same width so you don't have to adjust them. That helps a lot. And then some glue. Pull up my glue here. And then I just I just glue them. I will try and remember to link a few videos there where I've watched other YouTubers do it. So the more I, you get more ideas from more people uh, that have maybe a different spin on it. So really you're just gluing envelopes together at this point. So let's just glue these two big guys together. I'm a bit condensed here because I got my sewing machine right beside me. And just a glue sticking. So the only thing you want to bear in mind is the fold. So you do want to make sure that your fold is the crease I mean and the envelopes have room to bend. So that you don't have to recrease your envelope. And you just check it by folding it, making sure it folds neat. And I just glue that down. So you can have a lot of fun with these envelopes by keeping the windows. You can do all kinds of things, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it relatively simplified here. Um, and then I kind of decide what I want to do for my cover. So I'm gonna make this my cover. So I'm gonna add a couple of smaller envelopes to this. You can always cut these bigger ones down as well, like you can cut these smaller if you don't want to do a really tall journal. So I think I'll do something, get rid of this. I think I'll do something with this guy. Maybe he'll flip up. So I'll glue him there. I'll take this one and glue it here. Just so it's a little something fun. There's really, again, no wrong or right to these. It's just about gluing things where you want them. And sometimes I find these flip-flops uh, and uh, flip-flop journals are kind of fun because you do things by accident. You glue something closed by accident and it creates a whole other pocket. <laughs> and you're like, oh, well that worked too. <laughs> a, little, a little bit of a surprise. So you can either glue these closed or you can keep these as a pocket. Some, I usually decide that later. So I've got this one. Do I want that for my cover? I got a little bit bigger. This one might be a bit too wide. But they are a good way to use up envelopes, especially if you're the kind of person who keeps all their goodies and uh, keeps all their goodies from the mail. You know, you can recycle all your mail. So, I mean, again, you can put as many or as few of these as you want. So, I think it's kind of fun to start your journal off with a lot of flips. So, this one's a bit long, so I'm going to chop him. He's a bit wide, I mean, so I'm going to chop him a little shorter. And create a new fold in here. So that he doesn't overhang. So, I just line him up where I want him and then kind of pull it out to match here. And then refold, kind of force the new, the new fold. Just kind of give me an indication there of where I want it. So now I know I want to fold this guy way down here, and then try to fold him straight. And eh, not always straight. There we go. So I just created a new fold in this envelope. So for these little ones, I usually like to keep them as pockets. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut these. So I'm trying to, I'm gonna try and keep the video under an hour because I've been creating a lot of long videos lately. You guys have really been encouraging that, so thank you. But I personally don't watch very long videos. Uh, I tend to fast forward through a lot of it. Um, 
So I prefer videos around the, the 45 minute mark, but sometimes you can't get out all the details in. And uh, sometimes I'm too impatient and I want to keep working on my journal that I don't film the next part. So I try to get it all done in, in one go. So that's glued down there. So you can see it's glued to this main envelope. And then we'll do it with this guy. So I got a little bonkers in the beginning with the amount of envelopes I use. But I can't help myself. I just think it's so much fun. Adds a little character, you know. Okay, so there's the the, the front of the book. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> it's a lot, but it's fun. Okay, so now I'm going to open this second one. So I just use my ruler for that and I slide that in. Rip the side of the envelope. So now my envelope is open. I'm going to grab another big guy and I will probably just glue him down here. Yeah, I'll just glue them there for now and see which way I want to fold all these. So again, the purpose is just to use envelopes is the idea behind this. I mean, obviously you can just fold big paper this way, but it's fun to use up these envelopes. I'm gonna pull this guy out just so he's level. Look on the other side here, make sure that the edges are level. Yes everywhere. <laughs> it does get some mess. All right. Okay, so now I have this going. So what I like to do is bend the opposite here. And this is what creates that flop on the other side. So we go back to the beginning of my journal. And now it opens this way and it opens this way. So I'll show you. It's kind of like an accordion, basically. You don't have to, you can you can keep it going the, sa the same way it was originally, but it's nice to kind of keep folding. And again, you can create more envelopes and more envelopes, whatever you want. So for video's sake, I'm gonna leave it at this size. And now I'm gonna cover the page. I can decide if I wanna make this a pocket um, if I want to decorate these windows, I usually just kind of end up covering it up. Um, what I, you also want to decide too, while we're talking about decisions is your signatures. So I folded, pre-folded some papers. I try to have these pre-folded. So when I'm bored and I can't think of something to make, uh, I tend to do the boring stuff and prefab and pre-fold papers and in some cases even create uh, full signatures that are ready to go in a journal um, also and glue and build envelopes so that's an idea too if you're bored and you but you're not feeling overly creative you can prep stuff and that that just sits in a box ready to use so that saved me a lot of time i just pulled some out and uh, now I have my signatures. So you can s decide where you want to put your signatures and how many. So I'm going to sew probably one in there. I'll also one in here. And probably one in the beginning. So now your journal's got some bones to it. It's got some meat. And you can really have fun with those pages as well. So those are the kind of things you want to consider when you're decorating and where you're deciding where to put pockets and things. So three signatures in this guy. So let's have some fun. Let's put some paper here. What's nice about this scrapbook paper, it's big. And I'm used to working with small paper, so I can use this whole page. I really need to make, sorry, move my camera. Really need to make some space here. Cause the paper's so big. I can use this whole page and cover almost all my envelopes, which is kind of nice, but I want to think I'm going to leave this guy a pocket. I like the stopwatch, so I'm going to use the stopwatch. So where's my scissors? So I'm not getting my paper cutter out, but if you want straight lines, I highly recommend a paper cutter. But I am no perfectionist, as you'll soon see. <laughs> 
I just line it up, right, figure out where I want to glue it, and then where I want to cut it. So I am going to cut it just shy of that envelope. Actually, you know what? I'll cut it a little, I'm going to cut it about here, because what I'm going to do is tuck it inside that envelope. I might have to trim the edge a bit, and then it will hide this blue. That works. Hopefully, in my head it works. So I'm just gonna line this up with the edge and then kind of tell myself where I wanna cut it. Sometimes I like the envelope showing through behind the paper too. Just kind of makes it a little bit more handmade looking. So I don't like perfect, which is good because I can't do perfect. <laughs> so here's a little bit of the envelope showing. I just, I like that. Uh, it might drive some of you crazy, but I do kind of like that look. I mean, if I can sew up here, I can do lace edges, I can do whatever I want. So that I'm just going to tuck right in to this envelope. Just make sure it fits. I'm just covering up the envelopes a little bit. Okay, that works. I really like the back of that paper too. That's the only problem with scrapbook paper. If you buy double-sided, it's just so hard to use because I don't want to cover the stuff I like and then I don't end up using it. I'm sure I've said that a million times in my, in my videos, but it's the truth. Okay, so bear with me here. Hopefully I'm in frame. And I'm gonna slide this in. Slide this side in. Try not to get glue everywhere. Just keep sliding it in past there. Make sure I have enough room here. What's nice about that uh, three in one is it does give you some time to manipulate your papers before it glues. Just shove that down. I'm just going to press it in a bit and then I'm going to refold my envelope line here while it's drying. Refold the folds in both directions because what's fun about these two is while you're while you're building them and designing them you can change your mind and have it flip another way. So it's, this is probably what I would recommend for a beginner actually is this kind of journal. Uh, because it really does kind of force you to think outside the box a little bit and there's there's not a lot of sewing involved I mean we're gonna sew because I like the look of the sewing but you don't have to sew anything you just have to glue so even your signatures you can technically glue them in okay so I'll just make sure it folds the way I want it my ruler here. Just kind of reinforce that because the scrap of paper is pretty thick. Okay, so that's the first bit. So let's do, let's decorate this. So I'm going to keep this a pocket as well. So for me, I like to just chop off a little bit here and kind of level it out. I find it easier to camouflage the uh, envelope opening a little bit by doing that and then I'm going to cover this now and then I'll punch a kind of round circle to show an envelope so let's see what paper this is some rose paper that's pretty let's use that Ooh, that's pretty too <laughs> I'm torn oh I like that okay I'm gonna go with this one sorry I'll use the roses on something else all right, so again, just kind of kind of wing, just going to wing it. Because that's how I roll. And then going up this way. I'm going to go a little bit shy of the envelope, I think. But, you know, I, again, I'm kind of moving quickly here for the sake of the video. You take your time and cut things straight and even. Okay, so I'll glue 
leave that there. That works. I'm gonna remove this graphic part to the top like this. Okay. We'll add a little bit of that rose trim. So my favorite part about journaling is building the ephemera and decorating. The actual building of the journals, I used to love it, but I've kind of gotten tired of doing it. So what a, that's one of these things I like about these flip-flop journals. You should feel like you're decorating the whole thing. So if you're into the decorating part and not so much the building of a journal, then this is the kind of, this is kind of a journal you want to build because it does go nice and fast. Let's put this guy here. So I'm going to cut just to hide this part of the envelope. Just kind of cut it about there. I don't need quite so much. So the less bulk you can put in there, the better, because then you can add more decorations after. I'm just going to glue stick this. There we go. I'm sorry about the lighting. I hope it's not casting too much of a shadow. I still only have the one source of light. Because when I put the other light on, it casts even a bigger shadow. So hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing here. Just make sure that isn't on the fold. Bring this glue completely on the edge. So once this is dried a bit, I'll go back around with my heavy duty glue like this or my sewing machine and make sure I catch all the edges. So as you can see, I didn't get cut evenly here. So we can either add a piece of that rose paper on the edge. Kind of fold it over. Now let's do that instead of punching a a hole, a semicircle for the pocket. Let's put just a little bit of a lip on there. So if you want things embellished, like if you wanted this to be sewn or stuff, you would do all of that before you would glue the envelopes together. But I run the whole, I just shove the whole thing through my sewing machine. Okay, so just create a bit of a lip here on this edge. So that would look nice with stitching, but because it's already glued, that's a no go. So I'm just gonna throw some glue in here. Hopefully I'm in frame for you. Shove that in, shove that in, and then just press her down. So the raw edges is what I like, but again, you would bring the, the paper right up to the edge of the envelope if you want a tidier look. So there's our little pocket. It's kind of cute. And the signatures are going to get sewn in here, so you don't have to worry too much about this showing. But if it does drive you bonkers, you can put um, glue some washi tape in there or something if it really bothers you. Uh, again, it doesn't really bother me at all. So for this one, I keep losing my baby envelopes here. So for this one, maybe we'll do a collage in a minute. So let's go to the back and glue some more paper. <laughs> see what else we got in here just look at the other sides of the papers yeah I didn't know it came with these because these are a bit wide for the projects I usually use that's nice a little carbon style it's a bit plain oh, there's some stripe You can go quite a long way with this kind of paper. All right, let's, oops, sorry, let's use the stripe. And of course, you keep all your scraps. Hmm. 
I think I like the stripe better. It's a bit too bold for me, that another one. So there we go. I might just glue that whole page down and cut around the edge. There's no pockets on this side yet. We can always add them. Again, you can always change your mind and then add another um, envelope. Just keep building your... I'm just going to thin this out and move quick because this once it's thinned out, it, it dries pretty quick. Place it down. Again, with a little bit of envelope showing. It's just what I like. And of course you can do different pages and you cover them all individually, which I did in that pink one that I just showed you. Each envelope I covered separately with a different paper, which is more time consuming. So, but again, lots of fun. So again, I'm going to fold these over on their crease. Grab my bone folder here. And I like to fold them on both directions. So I'll fold it that way, bring it to the front, and fold it back. Just because the scrap of paper is pretty thick. I kind of want to weaken the, the paper a little bit on that fold. And then I'm going to fold this guy back. Like that. Just push it, press it, press it again the other way. Just kind of really make that paper malleable. Okay, there we go. That's the way I want mine to fold. And now we have the front to do. So the front's kind of fun. Choose something bold for the front, maybe this guy. I'm going vertical. So I'm going to cut and glue. Yeah, these are all really fun journals to make and pretty quick and easy. So I'm going to measure that here, put it on here, and just trim. Okay, we'll glue that down. Boy, I was uh, really enjoying that scrapbook store. It's like a casino or something. You gotta go in with a set allowance. <laughs> Not that I go to the casino or anything, but <laughs> I've gotta go in with like a hundred bucks and not spending any more because I could drop a lot of money in a scrapbook store. It's like a paper person's heaven in there. And I like thrifting, but sometimes it's nice to go into a store with all those kind of goodies in there. You can't help yourself. I'm just gonna punch a hole in here so don't forget that it's actually an envelope. Because <laughs> I'll forget. All right. So let's design here a little bit. I don't know what I'm gonna do just yet. I really like the look of this paper. Look the uh, design on it. So I'm going to put that on this envelope. And chop it. I do like to leave a little bit of borders. I don't like to go right to the edge. A little bit of border on there. 
just got a crease in it. That rose is pretty. I think I'll use that on the next envelope so it shines through a little. It's kind of a vintage romantic look. This paper's kind of got a bit of a romantic feel and a bit of a steampunk, steampunk vibe to it, which is kind of fun to blend the two. There we go. And let's do the roses on this one. Sorry, I have to keep rotating my book around. Hope it's not making you dizzy or confused. Just it's hard to it's hard to cut. I have a big tray in front of me with all my uh, cutoffs and things that I have to kind of put away. So it's hindering my large paper pieces. I'm not used to working with such big pieces. I think it's about here. straightened just a bit and again use a paper cutter if, if the the wonkiness drives you nuts but I, I kind of like wonky okay that's pretty I like that did I rip my envelope here oh that's where I cut it right clean that edge up a bit this guy and of course I like to vintage it up even more with my distressed inks kind of give it an old feeling what I like about these uh, flip-flop journals too is the uh, the way they feel in my hand <laughs> it sounds weird I know but I just they're they're comfortable to hold they don't have a, a hard edge to them like uh, other journals they're uh, they're soft and they're round and they're, like I don't know why but tangibly uh, I really like them a lot. Does that make sense? This is a nice paper too. It's kind of a, I'm not sure I like it with that color though, so I'd have to hide my envelope a bit because I don't like the browns with that. Gonna have a little peekaboo of the brown coming out. But this is more of a red brown. I'm sorry if this is boring you, <laughs> but I did, uh, I did want to do this process and I didn't want to just have the journal made and then talk about how I made it. I wanted to just go ahead and do it. I think I'm going to teach my, my seniors group this journal next month. I think they'd really enjoy it and be able to do it. I'm going to cut this just a little bit shy. There, I like that. Okay. I think they'd, uh, I think they would enjoy making these. Because like I said, they're, they're quite easy to make. There really is no wrong or right to them. It's just having fun folding the envelopes and decorating them. Like I said, it's instant decorating. That's probably why I like it so much. Okay. And something on these guys. I think maybe we'll try some oh my God, in here. other papers. So, sorry about the crinkling. These are your creative studio papers I have left. Some nice papers in here. There's some vellum. Something a little different. Let's see if the glue doesn't show through. I'm not sure. Sometimes uh, different vellums I find show the glue, and other vellums don't. So these little your creative studio boxes I get and review. I really love the stuff that comes in them. Some beautiful papers, beautiful everything really. And then they go 
quite a long ways. I get quite a lot of use out of them. All right. So we'll see if the glue shows up. So good. What else have we got? Oh, that's pretty. Let's use that. This is, feels like a bit of a rice paper, also from your creative studios. So I think I'll square this envelope off just a little bit. I just find it easier to glue the paper to and trying to match this shape. And then it's also a little easier to get in there with whatever you're putting in that envelope. So if I have a rough edge, I can take it a little longer and fold it over on itself. So let me cut the length first. And then I just fold this edge. Still a bit wide? Nope, maybe, maybe a bit wide. I like the edge of the envelopes to show, like I said before. Chop that down a bit. And then I'm just going to make this a little bit more narrow. Don't need all that bulk in there. Okay, so let's glue this down. And then we'll do some signatures. I think there's that one back page I still have to cover, but we can leave that for now. I think you get the idea. I'm just going to turn this for a second. A little glue on here. On the edge, if I can. And then open up my envelope and hopefully just tuck it in. Sometimes it's smooth, sometimes it's not. There we go. That works. So I'm going to leave this white because I think I'm just going to ink it to tone the white down because I will ink the whole page. I don't think I need a hole punch in there. This way. There we go. So that our little pocket here. This is the last page we need to do which I'll wait on, so you don't have to watch me do that. And like I said, I'll go around and either sew all this in or um, uh, go back and reinforce it with some glue. So this guy, what can we do there? We definitely need something there, don't we? A piece of this rose paper. Just to camouflage that a bit. Gonna add a trim. You could put ribbon there. So if you want to sew around your journal, you'll want to pass it through the sewing machine before you sew all your signatures and details in. Um, that will help kind of less bulk going through your machine. But I'm going to just sew my signatures in so that you can see how... I'll, maybe I'll just sew one in so you can see how it goes. Oops. I just want to hide this strip here. Not loving that. And again, you can add more envelopes at this time, too. You want to feel like you need a pocket on this side. You can create a pocket, obviously, or you can add one. Add an envelope. You can put a little envelope in here, for example. Okay, let's do a signature so you can see how I sew them. Pretty straightforward. I sew my signatures just straight into my journal. 
um, with my machine because I'm kind of, uh, I have to be in the mood to sew. Uh, I have been sewing lately, been in the mood to sew lately, but uh, I think I'm just going to sew this in real quick here. Let's go back to where we wanted one. I definitely want one here. So I'm going to find my signature, find the middle of it. And then I will use a clamp on the bottom and hopefully sew straight enough. And if I don't, oh well, I don't, I don't get upset. Either I take it apart or I re-sew it. So hopefully my machine can get through this bulky paper. I don't know if you can actually see what I'm doing or not. Sorry, I'm not set up for that kind of filming, but I think you'll be able to see in a minute what I'm doing. Just bear with me here. shaking the camera I'm on one of those, oh I just broke my needle I'm on one of those um, bouncy tables I broke my needle because I was shoving too hard <laughs> so that can happen <laughs> so you can see I was getting through it and then I was talking and I shoved too fast but there it's that's how it sews in and then you can cut I, like I said I come around with the glue and clean all this up and uh, you, I sometimes I'll even put like ribbon on here or something so I'm not going to replace my needle now. It takes too long, which is unfortunate because I wanted to show you how that all goes in. But there's one going in. So you can see this was a bit maybe too much paper. I have some pretty thick cardstock in here too for my machine. So the needle wasn't happy. I go through so many sewing needles. I'm a bit of a, a meanie to my machine. Um, so I get a little rough. But you get the point. You can also hand sew this with a pamphlet stitch and you can YouTube that and sh show how people do those sorts of things. Um, let's see, do we want to do, do you want to, I don't know how long we've been. If you want to actually do some decorating or should I just leave it here? I think I'll leave it here and I'll show you. I'll show you this other book here so that it's sewn so you can actually see um we can always do if you want let me know in the comments if you want to actually build ephemera for this and finish sewing it let me know and we'll do it so here you can see i did individual papers for each envelope uh, another idea too was at the top you can cut the envelope open for a big pocket which is really fun you can put a really big piece in here Let's see what else I did. Uh, so here's the signature sewed in. And again, just by my machine. And my needle didn't break that time. <laughs> I did little corner pockets. Sewed little corner pockets with the paper. I was having a lot of fun using this bright paper. And I left all the strings. I thought that was kind of kind of different. They might drive you bonkers. I uh, did little side pockets here. So there's a little pocket here and a little pocket here. And these are just uh, little scraps of paper for journaling. Is my camera still moving? Sorry, I don't know why it's bouncing. There we go, and a little pocket here. So there, and again, another signature just sewed right in with the machine. Now these didn't break because these were much thinner. As you can see, a lot less bulk it went right through. And then this is the back. And then I got a little card and another little card. And then I left this one, I left the window just for a little peekaboo. That one, actually, that video of how I made these is, is uh, a Your Creative Studios video. Let's see here. I did a little belly band. I'll just take this out. So I made a little, little uh, pad, another card just sewn. Here's the belly band and that's stuck onto an envelope and then another card which is stuck onto another envelope with another card and this one I still haven't finished decorating um, but I just wanted to show you that you can actually sew your journals and your uh, signatures in without breaking your needle and then you can just tie these up 
with some string or ribbon. Uh, I did make these. I think I have one in here. No, I don't. No, never mind. That was another video as well. I thought I had some string taken out. But something like this. You know, some some ribbon like this. I swear I had some out. Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyways, you can just tie them up like this. You know, just have fun. Just have fun with your envelopes. That's the whole point. Flip-flop journals. They flip and they flop in all different directions. That's the point of these. So have fun with that. I hope it gives you some ideas, some inspiration. I will try and remember to link some other um, videos from other YouTubers that have also created flip-flop journals and have some fun with it and uh, enjoy it. Okay, that's it for me. I've been yammering on long enough. Happy Canada Day and take care everyone. Thanks again. Bye.